All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section here. We're going to talk more about vertical acetopes. So I know last section we kind of uh, looked to see what caused vertical acetopes. Now we're really going to formalize it, get some limit notation, all these good things with it. So let's check out this example here. So go ahead and draw on the vertical acetope. So I know there's one vertical acetope. I see another one there on the graph right there. So draw that bad boy in. And when we were just finding them last time, we were just saying, oh yeah, I can see there's an X, I'm sorry, there's a vertical acetope when X is what, negative five? And where's that other one at? It looks like two. So I can see there's two vertical asymptotes here. So can we really get after it and figure out what's going on with some notation here? So we're gonna look at one-sided limits. So don't freak out. The limit as X approaches negative five from the left. So this means from the left side. So we're looking at the asymptote at negative five from the left side versus if you got a little plus sign up here, that means we're looking at it from the right side. So this is kind of fun. You just follow the graph and see what's happening. Um, so it's, it's pretty great. I like this. So let's take a look at negative five. So here's negative five from the left side. So I'm following this function in, I'm following in, I'm following in. Where is he going? He's going down, 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 down to infinity. So if you're going down to negative infinity, that's what's happening from the left side versus now look at negative five and follow the function from the right. So as I come in from the right side, I'm going up, 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 keep going up. I'm going to positive infinity. So we're just looking to see these, at these asymptotes, is it going to go to positive infinity or negative infinity? Super cool. So the words for this, what does this mean? As x approaches negative 5 from the left, the function is what? Not that. The function is approaching negative infinity. So that was just kind of the words for the notation there. So over here on the right, as x approaches negative infinity from the right, the f of x approaches positive infinity. So I just want to make sure we have the terminology, the vocab for this, uh, and the notation. Awesome. Excellent. So let's put it all together here. So last section we learned, okay, how do we find these vertical asymptotes? Well, I got to factor everything. So if I factor the bottom, see a difference of squares. So I figure there's something going on here at two and negative two. On top, I've got another difference of squares. I like this all day because of subtraction. They'll cancel x plus three, x minus three. I don't have any weird holes in here. I'm good to go. So I'm just looking at, okay, what's happening on the bottom? I'm going to have an issue at negative 2 and 2. So these are going to be my vertical asymptotes. Go ahead. I went ahead and graphed it. If you want to sketch your graph in there just so we can see it, we're going to, we're going to kind of need to look at the graph right now to see what's happening. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and put in the notation here. So let me shrink the size of this pin so I can write some real fine. Uh, there we go. Look at this. We got the limit as x approaches what number? So let's start with the negative 2. So I'm looking at this asymptote right here. So as I come into this asymptote from the left side, so I'm going to put a little left side up here, yoink, and I'm talking about, oops, not the f of x, I'm talking about the g of x. So the limit of the function as I approach negative 2 from the left, what's happening here? Well, it's going down to negative infinity. Also, then I got to do it again. The limit as I approach negative 2 from the right. So it's kind of a lot of notation here. So I'm going to look from the right of my function, talking about the g of x. What's happening here? So here's my asymptote as I come from the right. Whoop, it goes up to positive infinity. Excellent. Very nice. Very nice. So that takes care of one vertical asymptote. But I have another vertical asymptote here. So let's go ahead and do the other one. Same idea. The limit as x approaches, what number are we talking about here? We're talking about the positive 2 now. Draw that bad boy in there. Asymptote in there. So I've got, I'm going to be looking at positive 2 now. And it's of the g of x. And I'm going to be looking from what? The left side. So I'm going to put a little negative 2 there. And if you just want to set it up first, because it is a little bit of writing, we can just set it up and then talk about it. Now I'm going to look at that vertical asymptote at 2. From the right side, what is the function doing? So we're looking at uh, one-sided limits and seeing where the function is going. So where is this bad boy going? So if I look at 2, from the left it's going up, so this will be infinity. And if I follow it in from the right side, yoink, it's going down to negative infinity. Excellent. Very nice. That's just the function notation, or I'm sorry, the limit notation for these bad boys. Awesome! Here's the formal definition. If you uh, want to write that all out here, oh, I wrote it out for you. You're welcome. So you've got our rational function, two polynomials being divided, no common factors, 
what happens? There's going to be a vertical asymptote when the denominator is zero. So that's the key there. If nothing cancels, we don't get those holes, we're going to get a vertical asymptote. So there's the formal definition. What about this? What if we don't have a graph here? So let me change back to my pen. What if I don't have a graph and I can see, okay, there's something happening at x minus 2. You know, there's an issue. You can't have 2 in the bottom. I mean, you can factor the top if you want. There's no really need to, but just to make sure it's not going to cancel. But you could factor the top, no holes. So I've got this vertical asymptote at 2. Well, check it out. So I'm going to do it without looking at the picture. I'm going to say, oh, what happens is I approach 2 from the left. So this really, what I'm trying to do here is mimic this whole idea. Hey, what's the limit as x approaches 2 from the left side of the function? So I've got a new function here. Awesome. And then I'm going to do it over here. This is representing the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. So 2 is the problem. 2 is the vertical asymptote. And then it's, it's g of x. And I want to figure out, hey, what's going on? So without uh, looking at the graph, we're just going to look at the table of values. So in this case, we're going to go to our calculator and go to your y equals and type it in. You may need to pause right here because I, I preloaded this for myself. Just make sure you use parentheses on the numerator and on the denominator. It's the whole top being divided by the whole bottom. If you got to pause it, pause it real quick. Okay. And then practice this in the calculator with me. So basically, I can go to the graph, but really I want to go to the table. So your table probably defaults to something like this. If you hit second graph, it's just the default. So what we're going to do is go to second window. Up there in blue, it says table set. If you go to there, up to table set, we want to change the independent variable to ask. So I want to ask it these questions. So go back to your table. And now I can type in, hey, I'm going to approach 2 from the left. So I'm going to be at 1.9. Then I'm going to be at 1.99. Oops, too many nines. There you go. Then I'm going to be at 1.999. Again, too many nines. I get too excited. And see how I'm approaching that thing of I'm getting to two, but I'm not quite there yet. Getting closer and closer. That's enough nines. Excellent. And then you can see up here, here are my answers, and you can get them more precise if you want. There's my table right there. So I'm going to kind of cheat and just bring this guy over if that's cool so I can see him. So I'm going to use the table, and then you can just copy it over once you have the table. What's happening here? So I'm at I'm going down to negative 93.1. And we're, again, we're just looking for the trend here. I'm going to negative 993, negative 9,993. And then what is that, 99,000? Oh, my goodness. So what happens is I get closer and closer and closer to 2 from the left side. What is happening here? I am approaching negative infinity. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Excellent. If you want to, get, if you want to keep doing a bunch of nines, you can get super close without getting there. Why don't I just go straight there? You were asking yourself. Why in the world can't I just say, hey, that's great, Mr. Brush. Just type 2 in. Well, I mean, go for it. But what's happening at 2, remember, you get this error. It's undefined. It doesn't exist. So you can't put 2 in. So we're going to check it from the left. Well, if we check it from the left, what should we really do? We should come back up here and check it all from the right. So from the left, it's going to negative infinity. Let's go ahead and say, OK, I'm kind of 2.1's farther away. Well, 2.01's a little bit closer from the right. 2.001 even a little bit closer, and 2.0001. Do I have enough zeros in there? Do I have too many zeros? I think I do. Very sensitive. Three zeros? Okay, excellent. And you can do more. We're just getting the flow here. And again, this is the case where maybe you need to scroll on it and look because it's kind of hard to see the difference. Mainly, it's hard to see the difference because I have an extra zero. It's really very sensitive. Oh, not the graph. I'm saving that for later. Okay, so there it is right there. And I'm just going to copy and steal this if that's cool right here. And I've got this XY table. You can see what's happening here. Okay, so as I'm getting closer and closer to 2 from the right side, so I'm pretty much 2 at this point. I'm 2.001, so, so, so close. What is this number doing? See how it goes from 107 to 1,007, 10,000, 100,000. This is getting infinitely large from the right side. So we're going to use tables to go ahead and tell us. Awesome. So just to make sure, because we have the calculator, I went ahead and pre-graphed it. Let's bring the graph over here now. And there is a picture. Ooh, not that one. There is a picture of the graph right here. And is it, does it seem to be accurate? Did we get this one right? So as I approach, where's our trouble spot? This is our trouble spot. Yellow. You can't see yellow. Let's try purple. So as I see this, 
There's my vertical asymptote. It's a pretty good vertical asymptote. And then look from the left side. As I come in from the left, yes, it is going down to negative infinity. As I go to the right, it is going to positive infinity. So I did get it right. So graphically, it's much easier just to see it, but sometimes you only have a table of values to look at. Nice. The last one already, example four. So here's an equation with everything. Can we do it all? Yes, we can. I got multiplicity here. Why did I say multiplicity? Because look at the denominator. The multiplicity is two back from polynomials because it's the second degree of the same thing. If you want to write it out, I mean, we could write this out as x minus 2 times x minus 2. So we realize there's going to be a problem at positive 2 here. How about the top? Does it factor what multiplies to 12 and adds or subtracts to 4? I think we're going to get 6 and 2 on top. Well, check it out. What's happening here? Ooh, let's start with domain. But I see some exciting things. Domain doesn't care. The domain is just the bottom. Where's the problem in the bottom? It's at 2. I can see there's going to be a problem at 2. So you can put any number in up to 2. Yoink. Okay, 2 is the problem. So you can put any number in you want up to 2, because at the bottom, that's what makes the bottom equal to 0. And then you can go from 2 to anything above 2. So that's domain. He doesn't care if people cancel, whatever they do. That's just how he rolls. You can't put two in the bottom because of this. But now when I talk whole, check it out. Whoopsh, whoopsh, those cancel right there. So it looks like it's going to be a whole, except for this is a weird case. Because this was two and this was two, we'll go ahead and put that two and negative six. These are the interesting points. What happens here? Yes, this is normally a whole, but because of multiplicity, there's a reason I wrote multiplicity real big up top here, is that, yeah, that would be a whole normally, except... I've still got at the spot a vertical asymptote. It's like you got a hole and a vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote kind of wins. So there actually is no hole here. So just be careful. In some situations with multiplicity, it looks like there should be a hole, but no, nope, sorry. You've got a vertical asymptote that overrides it. So we're going to have a problem at two. Awesome. Um, the zeros, the zeros are the top. What's happening on top? So the only one left, he canceled. So he is gone. Um, so what's going to be happening here? Do we have a zero at negative six? So it did affect our zeros. Excellent. And what about, um, can I skip? We'll go to limit notation. Well, that's the limit notation. So if I want to do that, I have this vertical asymptote. So I know I'm going to be looking for the limit as X approaches two from the left of, we're talking about the H of X now. Interesting. And then I want to do the limits as x approaches 2 from the right of the h of x. And so now I'm either going to need a graph or I'm going to need a calculator to do it. So um, if you're going to put it in your calculator uh, to do that. Or actually, I got the graph right here. I went ahead and pre-graphed it. So I'll give you something. Either I'll give you a pre-made table, I'll give you a calculator, and you use the calculator to do it. But I can see there's that problem at 2, and you can see that vertical asymptote. And they're still get, working their way towards it. But now when I have the picture, what happens is I come in from the left. Yes, I'm definitely going down to negative infinity. And then what happens from the right, I'm definitely going up to positive infinity. So you're going to need a table or a graph or something there uh, to check it out. How about horizontal asymptotes? So... Uh, remember, this is x squared and bottom x squared on top. What is the leading coefficient? So these are the same power. This is really x squared. Be careful here. If you multiplied this out, it would be x squared uh, minus 4x plus 4. So you can multiply out the bottom, and then we're looking at x squared and x squared. So what's, they're the same. So we have a horizontal asymptote at 1. Does that show up on your graph? There should be some right here. We've got this horizontal asymptote. So we got a lot of action going on. I love rational functions. All kinds of cool stuff going on here. And then can you, this is kind of old school, we're just going to tie it all together, do the end behavior? Sure. We're going to look at those limits to infinity. We're going to look at, hey, what happens is I go to negative infinity of this function of the h of x. Ah, I still, I said it, but I still wrote f. <laughs> Sorry, it's an h. Just keeping it real here, mixing it up a little bit. And then, so that's our left in behavior. Now look at the right in behavior. So this is the limit notation of h of x as I go to the right. And what's happening, look at your graph or just look at the answer right before us. 
What's happening as I go left? I'm approaching one. What's happening as I go right? I'm approaching one. So here's what's happening. I'm going to say, cool, vertical asthope is at two. This is the limit notation of the vertical asthope. Well, tell me what's happening from the left. Tell me what's happening from the right. Same thing with horizontal asthope. So down here, horizontal asthope is at one. What's the in behavior? What's the formal definition of a horizontal asthope? Well, you look to the left, you look to the right, uh, and you see what it's approaching. It's approaching one. Man, that is it right there. Rock and roll. Go ahead, try to practice. Good luck on the mastery check. Peace out.